In this video, we will be replacing the rack and pinion drive belt. These instructions can be used for any 2011 to 2015 Ford Explorer. This kit will contain one belt, one O-ring, two boot clamps, and the gasket for the belt housing. The tools required will be a one and a half inch wrench, a torque wrench, an eight millimeter and 10 millimeter socket, a pair of channel lock pliers, a paint pin, and a pocket screwdriver. To start the repair, the rack must first be removed from the vehicle. This service can be performed while the outer tie rod ends are still attached to the rack and pinion. The first step is making an alignment mark on your input shaft. The alignment mark will go all the way down from the input shaft to the rack and pinion housing. Marking the housing will guarantee that your alignment marks have a reference point as the boot over the input shaft may move. It's important during this entire process that you note the number of rotations and which direction they go and bring your rack back to center prior to reinstalling in the vehicle. Remove the outer and inner boot clamps and slide the inner tie rod boot out of the way. Next, break the inner tie rod end loose using our one and a half inch wrench. Remove the inner tie rod end completely and set aside. Next, disconnect the belt drive motor and set the plug aside. Remove the six eight millimeter bolts that hold the belt housing to the rack. In order to separate the belt housing from the rack, you need to turn the input shaft. It's important during this entire process that you note the number of rotations and which direction they go. To reinstall the belt, we will be turning the input shaft back the same number of rotations. Once the rack housing is separated enough, we can now open the case further by turning the belt pulley. Make an alignment mark that aligns the belt pulley to the rack housing. It's important that your belt pulley goes back to the original position it was in following this service. Count all rotations in which direction travel. Loosen the one 10 millimeter bolt, separate and turn the motor assembly to relieve the tension on the belt enough to allow the belt to slide off. Now fully remove the 10 millimeter bolt. Remove the motor assembly and then remove the motor O-ring. Clean the motor mounting surface. Lubricate the new O-ring included in the kit and install it on the motor. Using dielectric grease, lubricate the motor mounting surface for easy installation and help avoid water intrusion. Remove the bearing chamfer ring and slide the belt housing off the rack assembly. Remove the belt. Remove the old gasket from the belt housing and install the new gasket from the kit. Using dielectric grease, lubricate the belt housing cover for easy installation and to help avoid water intrusion into the belt housing. Install the new belt and slide the belt housing back into the rack housing. Start to thread the chamfer ring back onto the belt housing and apply thread lock 180 degrees apart. Tighten chamfer ring to 60 foot pounds. Reinstall the motor assembly to the rack housing and loosely install one bolt to hold it in place and turn the motor assembly to tension the belt. While holding the motor assembly in place to maintain tension, tighten the one 10 millimeter bolt to 15 foot pounds. Now align the belt housing with the rack housing and turn the belt pulley in the reverse direction initially used to separate the housing. The pulley alignment mark should be back in line. This will bring the two pieces closer together and allow you to turn the input shaft back to the original position and close the gap between the rack housing and the belt housing. 
If the alignment marks are slightly off, it is not a major issue, but you may need to perform an alignment after the service is completed. Tighten the six 8mm bolts that hold the housing together to 10 foot-pounds. Reconnect the motor's electrical connector. Install the inner tie rod and tighten it to 66 foot-pounds. Install the inner tie rod boot using the new inner and outer boot clamps included in the kit. Verify the input shaft alignment marks are back in the original position. If the alignment marks are slightly off, it is not a major issue, but you may need to perform an alignment. The rack and pinion is now ready to be reinstalled on the vehicle. 